like that's coming out of the setting sun. Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's screencast, we are going to install the D435 camera on the NVIDIA Jetson TX1 development kit. Let's get started. In the last few videos, we've been installing the RealSense libraries and ROS drivers for the D435 camera. Those demos have been on a Jetson TX2. I thought it might be interesting just to run through the build process on a Jetson TX1. In this video, we'll do several tasks. The first task is to install Live RealSense on the Jetson TX1. We will build the patched kernel and install the Live RealSense libraries. We will then install ROS, and then we will install the ROS wrapper for RealSense. The first step is to build the patched kernel for the Jetson TX1. This will install the patches for the Live RealSense library so that the camera can communicate with the kernel efficiently. On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Build Live RealSense 2TX. Let's clone that library. Switch over to that repository's directory. And let's build the patched kernel. Okay, let's reboot. Now we will install Live Real Sense. The camera is not attached. Now we are ready to install ROS On the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub, there is a repository named Install ROS TX1. Let's clone that repository. And switch over to that repository's directory. Let's install ROS with a desktop package. Installation complete. Now let's create a Capkin workspace. We'll just go with the default one, which is named catkin underscore ws. This script will set it up for us. Now it's time to install the RealSense ROS wrapper. There is a convenience script on the Jetson Hacks account on GitHub that will help us with that. It's called install RealSense to ROS TX. Let's clear this off. Go up to the home directory, then we'll close in this repository. Let's switch over to that directory. Let's open up a system monitor. You can see that we're using up almost half of the memory here. Let's close the browser so that we have enough memory to compile our program.
Hmm, I failed. Let's try it again. Okay. It looked like that worked. Typically when you see these internal compiler errors, that means that it ran out of memory when it was trying to compile it. Our camera is now installed. Let's open our browser back up. This is the Intel ROS RealSense repository. It's the wrapper for RealSense for ROS. This looks like an interesting example. RGBD launch. I know that I need a different ROS package, so let's add that. I guess the first step is to see if the camera actually works. Let's try that. Let's plug the camera in. Now let's turn the RGB camera on. There we are. This is a little shiny. So there are some exposure issues when it's in auto exposure mode. We get these incomplete frame detected errors. That also happens on the TX2. I'm not quite sure why that is. Let's adjust our exposure manually. So when we darken it up a little bit, the error me messages stop. So that's pretty close to something that's usable. Let's turn on our stereo module. It's hard to tell. Um, it appears to be messed up on the TX1 a little bit. I don't know but if it's just because it's slow or what the story is. Let me turn this off. So it appears to be a little bit slow here on the TX1. It doesn't have quite the snap that it did on the TX2. That's not surprising. The TX2 is almost twice as fast. Let's try it out with ROS and see if we get better results. Switch over to our CatKin workspace. Let's source the devil just for good luck. Let's start this launch file. And let's start up our viz. Open up a new terminal. Let 
Let's close this web browser. Fixed frame is now the camera. Let's add a point cloud. Okay. It's a late afternoon here. The sun is setting. It's about to come through this window. Let's add in an RGB window. You can see that our frame rate is around 20 frames a second. So it's not, that's probably seven or eight frames a second less than the TX2 was showing. So you kind of get a feel for what the frame rate is here. It's not what the TX2 is, but that's not surprising. It's still pretty performant. It's not nearly as bad as in the RealSense viewer. Let's take a look at the depth map here. This is the unprocessed, just raw image come straight from the camera. So you can see that it's relatively good. It tries to fi fix the exposure when you block the lights and things of that nature. It doesn't have a shark filter in it, but that's not surprising either. Boom, 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 boom. I like this coming out of the setting sun. Coming out of the setting sun. Coming out of the setting sun. Take a quick look at the infrared image. There are two infrared cameras, of course. We'll just take a look at one of them, see what it looks like. Okay. So you can see that it's dark enough where you can actually see the infrared laser projector. That's what these little speckled dots are. So this is a pretty interesting problem here that you're looking at. This is typical of what you have in a lot of robotics applications. You're looking almost directly into a setting sun, so um, the image is going to be overexposed. But at the same time, you have areas of the image which are underexposed. It's kind of the nature, so underexposed, overexposed. So you have to kind of mesh that together and try to figure out what's a ground truth of what your image actually looks like. Typically, you would put some type of filter to help you deal with the sun, some type of ND filter or something like that. But this kind of just starts, you can tell just from the amount of time that we've been on camera here that the this glare spot is growing and it will get worse. I would suggest you always keep a shark with you. That way you won't have any troubles. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.